Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan. Out of all the mechanical life forms that the Transformers franchise has to offer, one species continues to be notorious for its appetite. They don't ever have to worry about going on a calorie deficit diet because their body just metabolized the food into an ultra powerful substance called the Energon. Yes, we are of course talking about the Insecticons, who love to multiply and are the farthest thing from being picky eaters. Maybe if they existed on our planet, they would have solved the plastic waste crisis, but then their existence would come with a horde of other problems as well, which we'll find out about as we jump into today's video and learn all about these pesky beings. But before diving into today's content, we do have one very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just one small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now, let's begin. We did it! Our enemies are falling into their Insectoid Troublemakers, the Insecticon Origins. A species dedicated to their clone hordes, or the swarms of their own clones, Insecticons bring about nothing but trouble. No wonder they are trusted by the leader of the Decepticons himself, Megatron. They arrived on Earth at around the same time as the Transformers, where they fled using their escape pods. Although they were in leagues with the Decepticons, the Insecticons operated outside the Decepticon umbrella, so they consider themselves to be a different species altogether. Of course, their individualistic nature contributed to this as well. They appeared in the first season of the Transformers animated series when Bombshell, Kickback, and their leader Shrapnel were under Megatron's crew. However, their relationship with Megatron was complicated to say the least. The two crews occasionally allied with one another when they had common interests. On Earth, the Insecticons landed in a swamp, where they acquired the appearances of local insects due to their identical computers to adapt to life on Earth. But creating clones was not their only specialty. Their unending hunger required them to eat at all times in order to satiate it. The Insecticons would eat literally anything. To them, both organic and inorganic matter were gourmet. In fact, the need to constantly feed themselves soon became their primary motivation. But as things would have it, this ravenous appetite did not go unnoticed by the Autobots and the Decepticons alike, which resulted in the Decepticons offering their allyship to the Insecticons. Insecticons are renowned for their clone hordes, which they created using bombshells, insecta shells, and shrapnel's clone beams and they need one specific thing to maintain their coveted horde, Energon. So whenever Megatron needed their help, he would bribe the Insecticons with the fuel. But they weren't averse to going against their ally either, which happened whenever their interests and ambitions clashed. In fact, the Insecticons were greedy, arrogant, and quite the troublemakers. This became clear when the Insecticons helped the Decepticons drive off the Autobots to later partake in the oil refinery raid. But the moment the odds turned against their favor, the Insecticons consumed the Energon cubes and fled the scene, leaving the Decepticons with the short end of the stick. Of course, Megatron didn't exactly take the betrayal lightly and swore vengeance upon them. However, as a species that could multiply, giving rise to more and more ravenous Insecticons, they were far from being a casual threat. However, they allied with Megatron once again when Megatron was pursuing the Electrocells, a man-made energy source that could devastate the Earth when overloaded. But this time around, Megatron returned the favor by rewarding them with three Energon cubes. Aware of the strife between the two groups, Autobot Mirage accelerated the situation by stealing the cubes and framing the Decepticons for theft. Angered beyond belief and oblivious to the true nature of the events, the Insecticons attacked the Decepticons to settle the score. But after, Mirage was cerebro shelled and made to become a slave for the Insecticons. Both Bombshell and Megatron had realized that they had been deceived. The Insecticons and the Decepticons joined hands once again since they found a common enemy in the Autobots. And as the saying goes, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Together, they used the injured Mirage to lure more Autobots into their trap. But once again, the Autobots gained the upper hand in the battle, and Megatron resorted to destroying the Electrocells. Massive explosions took over, and being the pesky little pests that they are, the Insecticons fled once again. Their next allyship was a bit different as Bombshell found himself in a solo venture with the Decepticons, who had captured a man-made robot with impressive skills named Nightbird. Bombshell performed brainwork on Nightbird, hoping to turn it into an ally of the Decepticons. Later, the Insecticons went against the Autobots in battle as they fought one another over the world energy chip, which controlled the power supply of the headquarters of the Autobots. Around this time, Bombshell helped Megatron and his Decepticons, while the latter's second-in-command, Starscream, pursued Nightbird and disabled him with his energy blast. Their binge-eating activities attracted the attention of the Autobots again after they began to devour the trees across a national park. The Decepticons arrived to aid the Insecticons in battle, and they managed to defeat Bumblebee, Beachcomber, and Hound. 
Once again, the two antagonist sides formed a temporary alliance as Megatron wanted to capture the date from the Iron Mountain storage facility. Meanwhile, he was willing to return the favor of the Insecticons by rewarding them with a Nova Power Core feast. And this time, the reward came before the job, which mostly aided Megatron himself as the Power Core helped the Insecticons grow greatly in terms of both size and power. The Insecticons relied on the Cerebro shelling, which allowed them to take control over both Transformers and humans. With control over the Decepticon Soundwave, however, the Insecticons found out that Megatron intended to dispose of them after he secured the Iron Mountain data. In fact, the Nova Power Core was too unstable and having fed on its energy, the Insecticons were destined to explode. This led to the Insecticons taking control over the other Decepticons as well. In the end, when Megatron came out of the Iron Mountain, he found his own troops pointing their guns at him. Once the Autobots learned about the upcoming fate of the Insecticons, they created an antidote to save them. As the antidote took effect, Kickback and Bombshell were saved. However, their leader, Shrapnel, who had a knack for repeating the last word of his sentences, exploded, as the antidote took time to take full effect on him. Although Bombshell and Kickback had reverted to their original sizes, they were able to bring Shrapnel back by reconstructing his shattered pieces. But with an enraged Megatron pursuing them, the Insecticons did what they do best. Well, apart from eating, that is. They escaped. They went on a cloning spree and created thousands of their own kind. With a ginormous active swarm, they raided a farmland to harvest energy. Although the Autobots, led by Smokescreen, tried to stop them, the Insecticons flew to the headquarters of the Decepticons for energy processing, where Megatron only gave them three minuscule cubes of Energon. He pretended as if this was all he had, but of course, that was a lie. Because the Insecticons had created a massive swarm of their species, the Autobots required a robotic insecticide. Having come across this news, Megatron alerted the Insecticons about what was going to come. However, the Insecticons were under the impression that they were being scammed and flew to the very place where the insecticide lay. While the Decepticons fought the Autobots, the Insecticons took great pleasure in pleasing their appetites by ravaging a forest that to them looked delicious. Too bad what waited for them were Morphobots, who happily devoured the Insecticon army and only Shrapnel, Kickback, and Bombshell returned from the battle as they escaped once again. But of course, the Insecticons had created a swarm of their clones before, so they did it once again. And as you may already expect, they headed to ravage a city that brought them into conflict with the Autobots once again. Here, the Autobots tried to take control of the Space Bridge, which normally allowed them to travel from one planet to another, kind of like the Bifrost from Thor. However, Megatron made the Insecticons steal the control module of the bridge, but this resulted in a crisis that would destroy the Earth. The Autobots and the Decepticons were left with no choice but to partner with one another. Together, they tracked down the Insecticons, who escaped out of fear of Megatron and left the bridge's control module behind. They also fought during the Battle of Autobot City, where Shrapnel, Bombshell, and Kickback were left battered. They were later reformed by the Lord of Chaos, Unicron. Insecticons in Transformers Prime Cartoon this animated series is set in the aligned continuity where the Insecticons are shown living in the underlevels of Cybertron, which is the home planet of the Autobots. Having partaken in the incredible cloning process, they boast a ginormous swarm of beastly creatures. Although we know that the Insecticons are sentient, clones are generally inferior than the ones that they've been cloned from. As a result, a constant cloning results in the creation of Insecticons that lack any shred of intelligence. In the Prime cartoon, one of the Insecticons was left in stasis in Cybertron, as it had to act as a sentry for the Decepticons. Decepticons. It was later awakened after Jack Darby and RC arrived in the Decepticon-controlled city of Kaon. At the heart of Cybertron dwelt an immensely powerful supercomputer called the Vector Sigma. A Transformer could activate its intelligence if they used the key to Vector Sigma, which in this case was possessed by Jack and RC. They used the key to enter the passage under the city, where they were soon attacked by the Insecticon they had awakened. Although RC tried to protect Jack, she was slammed to an arena wall by the Insecticon, who then went after Jack. As it reached Vector Sigma, which had the ability to create a link between a Transformer and the god Primus, the Insecticon found the supercomputer to be covered in scraplets, the deadliest disease to mechanical lifeforms. As the scraplets were feeding on Vector Sigma, Jack hurled one of them at the Insecticon. With one scraplet going after a new prey, the others followed suit, and it ultimately resulted in the death of the Insecticon, who was eaten alive. In another scenario, an Insecticon looking for scraps of Energon was noticed by Starscream, who was only one of the finest air warriors that Cybertron had. Surprised to see the Insecticon on Earth, Starscream asked it to hand over the Energon. However, he was soon attacked by the Insecticon, and it didn't stop until one of the swarm's leaders, Arachnid, intervened. Starscream suggested an alliance between his troops and the Insecticons in their war against the Decepticons. However, Arachnid 
Arachnid's order stood against him, causing Starscream to flee. Later, the Insecticon attacked Megatron himself, but too bad he was soon beheaded by the leader of the Decepticons. However, the situation led to Arachnid learning that this Insecticon was only acting as a scout to a huge Insecticon hive that lived in stasis underground. Arachnid used his new knowledge to awaken the Insecticons and used them to attack Megatron. Meanwhile, others attacked the Autobots and were received by the likes of Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. At the same time, RC went after Arachnid and put the Insecticon in stasis, bringing her control over the hive to an end. However, the Insecticons went on to be added to the rank of the Decepticons, but the ship they were in had a mind of its own, thanks to Megatron using the Dark Energon, but thankfully, it was soon disabled by Jack. Not long after, RC and Bumblebee got involved in a battle against the Insecticon, who got freed after coming in contact with a rail on the subway track. Megatron later sent a fierce Insecticon to Iacon City to receive a relic. One of their leaders, Hardshell, led some of the Insecticons to the equator of Earth, where they fought and lost to Bulkhead. Meanwhile, another Insecticon died due to some toxin and a grenade, but Hardshell later managed to defeat Bulkhead. After a Decepticon escape pod had crashed, several Insecticons and Viacons had to investigate it. They were also used as muscle by the Decepticons for laborious work that would lead to the discovery of the Iacon relics. Later, when they were made to find a Predacon skill, they were slaughtered by Optimus Prime, while Bombshock escaped. However, things took a turn for the worse when the Insecticons were sent to one of the Cybertron's moons, where a plague resulted in Arachnid feeding on its own kind. Insecticons storyline in the comic series The Insecticons in the comics were quite different than the ones we see in the cartoon. They served in the court of Lord Straxus, who was a Decepticon dictator on Cybertron. They arrived on Earth after Megatron requested them to do so. In fact, they didn't even know how to clone, but they were capable of shrinking into the size of insects. Due to this ability, they were often used for espionage. Under Lord Straxus, Shrapnel, Kickback, Dirge, Ramjet, Bombshell, and Thrust operated as officers with high ranks. Shrapnel was sadistic, cruel, and lacked the speech issue from the comics, where he had the tendency to repeat the last word of his sentences. Serving as the executive officer under Lord Straxus, he had to decode one of Soundwave's transmissions from Earth. He was also made to assist Straxus in managing the Space Bridge project. The Insecticons later served Darkmount as their security, where Shrapnel had captured and brought Autobot Scourge to the Straxus. These Insecticons also fought in a battle against the Autobots to show their allyship with the Decepticons. However, after Darkmount and Straxus fell, the Insecticons continued to have great importance to the Decepticon army in Cybertron. Although they didn't have the same abilities as their cartoon counterparts, they were perceived to be part of the deadliest killers under Decepticons by the Autobots. In fact, Emirate Zaron specifically targeted the Insecticons because they knew that without the insects, the Resistance would suffer a great blow to their psyche. Three of the Insecticons were later sent to Earth via the Space Bridge, bringing them to Megatron, who they began to work for. Megatron transformed them slightly so that they could turn into Earthly insects. In return, he used their talents to take over the mind of Ricky Vaquez, a technical staff whose mind Shrapnel needed to take a look into. Later, Bombshell tried to take over the mind of Optimus Prime by using a Cerebro shell. The trio eventually faded into the background of the storyline, as it was believed that Starscream had deactivated them. In the Dreamwave Generation 1 continuity, the three Insecticons teamed up with Ravage and Soundwave, and under Megatron's orders, the Insecticon and Decepticon Alliance headed out to kill Optimus Prime. Too bad they were handed their defeat on a silver platter, although Shrapnel transformed into a flashy jet in his Cybertronian mode, while Bombshell changed some of his parts to resemble a truck. After Shrapnel, Kickback, and Bombshell were sent to Earth, they were tasked with guiding the development of the planet, making it suitable for conquest. In the 2005 IDW continuity, we got to know a little more about the true origins of the Insecticons. They used to dwell deep beneath Cybertron as a mindless swarm, and they had one simple job, to protect the Earth's core from subterranean threats. Later, Decepticon scientists chose to clone the Insecticons resulting in the creation of Bombshell, Shrapnel, and Kickback. The rest of the cloning was not so successful, leaving the Insecticons with only three intelligent beings. As we already know, this Insecticon trio went on to occasionally side and fight with the Decepticons on planet Earth. However, the majority of the Insecticons were later destroyed by the large Autobot Omega Supreme. In another situation, the Insecticons tried to overthrow Megatron under Starscream, but they failed to do so. Ultimately, Megatron was defeated by Optimus Prime while the Insecticons fled. Most of the Insecticon clones on Cybertron were eventually exterminated, apart from Bob who was a lone member of the unintelligent swarm. However, as Megatron returned, he summoned the Insecticons to Cybertron, where they were brainwashed into acting as the Decepticod. However, as the Decepticod was defeated, 
the war came to an end, and the Insecticon Holy Trinity had to resort to working for the Autobots. Finally, we have the 2019 IDW continuity where Shrapnel, Bombshell, and Kickback re-emerged with their insatiable hunger for all forms of matter. Whatever they ate, they metabolized into their energy known as the Ultra Energon. Because the energy they produced was incredibly powerful, their biology was studied. Although nothing was found, the Insecticons were tasked with consuming Cybertron's waste and turning it into Energon. Their insatiable hunger got worse during the War of the Threefold Spark, where Bombshell, Shrapnel, and Kickback feasted on the dead and the dying. Around this time, they got Shockwave to clone them. Eventually, they were sent to a colony called Myalax, where they would start feasting on humans. Because they were constantly used for their abilities, the Insecticons began to resent their planet's government. As such, they chose to work with Shockwave, and in exchange, wanted him to clone a desired army for them. They went back to Cybertron following the fall of the space elevator known as the Tether. Back home, the Insecticons began to feast on a new habitat, but they were soon made to flee. Around this time, Bombshell realized that they needed to consume more lives to keep themselves going, and headed to Shockwave, hoping to find a supplier in him. However, his empty promises had angered the Insecticons, as they had not received their clones yet. As a result, the Insecticons decided to proceed with their own plan, instead of relying on someone else. They took control over Stystalker using the Cerebro shells and made him procure the cloning machinery while they themselves went after the fuel. The Insecticons attacked Autobots who were protecting organic matter and returned to their base with hopes of proving their power to everyone. When some of the new swarm of clones broke free, the Insecticons devoured them and used the Ultra Energon to create more and more clones, keeping a supply of food with themselves at all times. Naturally, the clones became a nuisance, like we've seen in the cartoons, which also brought the Insecticons into conflict with the Autobots time and time again. Although the relationship between the Insecticons and Shockwave had worsened, they tried to amend things. As a result, the Insecticons extended their help when the Decepticons learned of Termagax's mobile fortress. Bombshell was asked to take the fortress out, but the Insecticons failed at penetrating the mighty walls of the fortress. They were ultimately eliminated by Autobot reinforcements. The remaining Insecticons tried to penetrate the forces when Termagax came up with an idea to defeat the Insecticons as it spotted a rust worm on one of them. They were tacked to the nest in Cybertron and taken out. Ultimately, the Autobots and Termagax reprogrammed the Insecticons and were made to feast on the rust worm instead. Marvelous Verdict The Insecticon-Decepticon relationship seems to be more toxic than an on-again, off-again couple who constantly treat each other terribly, only for them to reunite and be toxic for everyone else when things are not going too well at home. Fortunately, the Autobots always arrive on time to put an end to the nuisance. And with that, we come to the end of today's video. What are your thoughts on the Insecticons? Did you enjoy today's video? If you did, well, don't forget to leave us a like and comment on our video. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, have a good one and be safe.